Hello, my name is Ed Frawley, and today we're going to do a short video on two questions that we got in our Ask Cindy portal on the front of Learberg.com. And as I say in all of these, we get many, many questions every single day that Cindy, my wife, answers. And we have a database where a lot of them go in. There's over 3,500 in there already, but that doesn't count the thousands that we don't put in there. And we try and pick questions that are simple questions to answer in a YouTube video or in a stream. Because, as I often say, common sense is not really always common. And that doesn't mean that anybody's stupid. It just means there is no stupid uh, question in dog training. It really comes down to experience. And the two questions, and I'm going to do two of them today because they're short. And I think they're good. People will find them interesting. One of them is when you ask your dog to sit and when you ask your dog, or if you ask your dog to lay down, how do you release them? Or do you have to use a different term? We'll talk about that. And the second one is also a good one because these folks have a rescue dog that they got and the dog has been bonded with the husband who had to go away for work for some time. When he was gone, the wife got along fine with the dog. But when he got home, uh, he was laying in bed and the dog was laying in bed with him and the wife came up and the dog tried to bite her. It's not uncommon, okay? So I'm gonna go through both of those right now. First I'll read it and then we'll talk about it. Hi Cindy, I searched for my question in the database and couldn't find it. I love everyone at Lyrikburg, but you and Michael Ellis are my favorite trainers to watch and learn from. Oh no, I'm, she forgot me. No, I don't care. That's right, the truth is they're both better dog trainers than me. What can I say? I'm wondering how to get my dog to remain in position like a down or a sit and not pop out of it immediately after I mark it and reward it. So what she's saying is she asks her dog to sit, the dog sits, she says yes, and she rewards the dog, and then the dog pops up. That's what her problem is. And I will go on here. Are they supposed to receive a release word when put in a stay or a place? Or should they always be waiting for a release word? Good question. I always get confused by this part of the training in the basic commands. Good questions, very good question. Cindy's answer is, and it's the same as I or Michael would give. So in the, in the video that we have on the power of training dogs with food, we talk about five basic commands. And they are yes, which is a release, Good means we like what you're doing, continue to do it. Ready means are you ready? Are, we, are you ready to start training? That's what ready means. It gets them excited. It tells them when training is, is about to happen. And then done or all done tells you training is done. So you take your dog out and you're going to do a training session with them. You get them excited, excited by saying, are you ready? Are you ready? Then they know something's gonna happen, something fun's gonna happen, and then at the end of that little two or three minute training session, you say, all done, and you put a leash on the dog, or you already have a leash on it, take him and put him away, put him in his crate. All done tells the dog that training is finished. And finally, the fifth word is no or nope. Nope is not a correction. Nope simply means no, you didn't do it right. If you want your reward, you have to try and do it again. So those are, the five, those are the five basic commands. And when you're training a dog in a position, you would ask your dog to sit, ask your dog to lay down, and you wouldn't mark it with a yes because yes is a release, okay? Yes means the dog can get up and move around, jump, on, jump all over, get its food reward, yeah, yeah, yeah. So in training, you would ask your dog to sit or lay down you would not give them a yes marker. The yes marker is the release. If you, yes, if you gave him a yes, if he knows the commands, and you gave him a yes, he could get up. He could run around looking for his treat. He could move to get a food reward. So when you want the dog to maintain position, you ask him to sit, you say, good, good. You can repeat it, say, good, good. And then when you are done 
having him stay in that position, you would say yes, and then he can get up and move. So that's the concept to the whole thing. It's covered in detail. Not only in The Power of Training Dogs with Food, I have a detailed article, if you want to read the article on my website, on exactly how these words are used. And we'll put the web address on this video, the graphic, so you can read it. Okay, now we're going to talk about the second one, and this is a good one. It's about the rescue dog that they have not had that long, and the dog tried to bite the guy's wife. There are two of us with our dog. I got a three-year-old rescue, and it was found as a stray with a leash on it. I bonded first with the dog in actually only a couple of weeks when I got her. I was away for a month, and my wife was training the dog while I was gone. I just got home and was laying in the bed, in my bed with the dog, and my wife entered and sat down on the bed and was laying across my legs to reach for the remote that was on the dog. The dog growled and tried to bite her. When I first got the dog, the wife grabbed her collar and she bit my wife. Not bad, it didn't break the skin, but she did bite her. The whole time I was gone, this dog was awesome with my wife. She has had no issues with her. Asking for a little bit of help here. Good questions. And really the answer is that the folks got along or got ahead of themselves in managing the dog. When we get a new dog in our home, there's a process that we go home to teach the dog how to live with us. We call it management. Management, in our opinion, is more important than obedience in the beginning. If you manage your dog correctly when you bring him into your home, the dog is going to learn your rules for how to live in your room or in your house. When we get a dog, when we bring them in, they're always either in an X-Pen in the house or they're always on leash in the house. And we don't let them come in and climb up into the bed. We don't let them come in and climb up on furniture in the beginning. Those are behaviors that are earned behaviors, but not in the beginning, and quite frankly, not for quite a while. So we have a video, and it's a free video on our website, on how Cindy and I live with our dogs. And we'll put the URL on the screen now. But the important thing is, is to take your time when you start to do it right. Take your time to set up your management protocol so the dog learns to be comfortable with you. So what you have going on is not that uncommon, but what would we would recommend would be for you to go right back to the beginning, start from scratch, get yourself an X-Pen, don't let this dog run around the house off leash, keep it on leash. And over time, take your, take your time to learn reward-based training. Get the video we did on, on marker training, uh, the power of trained dogs with food, uh, the power of trained dogs with markers, and you'll be just fine. And the important thing here is to remember what I said in the beginning, and that is management and proper management with a new dog is more important than basic obedience. If you have your dog on leash, if you have your dog in an X-Pen and it knows to stay in the X-Pen, you have control over the dog. It's not going to jump all over people. It's not going to bite people. You're not going to let that to happen. You're not going to let that happen. But do your management first, then think about doing the various obedience classes or training your dog in basic obedience. So in closing, if you watch these Q&As that I do that come into Cindy and you have a question yourself, don't ask them underneath in the YouTube format. Go to the front page of Learberg.com, scroll down to the Ask Cindy portal, enter your question there. Now, I will say this, you have to put your email in there, and the reason for that is not so we can spam you with email. We do not do that. We have a computer program that registers all of these questions. You can see the question and Cindy's answers. They're in a database at, at Learberg.com, and then if you, Cindy will answer it, and her answer's in the database. Then, if you ever come back two weeks later, a year later, Cindy will call you up by your email, and she'll see all of the conversations that she's had and what she's recommended earlier, 
and she'll kind of bring herself up to date on where you are with your dog, and then read your new question, and she can be way more helpful with you. So it's, it's, a kind of a, it's kind of a cool situation that not a lot of people do in our industry.